Hi guys, um, I recently hit 1000 followers on Instagram which is crazy so thank you so much to everyone who follows me on Instagram and to sort of celebrate I thought I'd do a Q&A only on Instagram so um, I got quite a few questions, I got 31 I think, or like there's quite a few questions to answer so I hope this video isn't going to be too long but I will answer every question and I hope you enjoy the video. My phone ready and Okay, so, question number one. Oppichow1 says, who inspires you to keep making YouTube videos? And the answer is kind of everyone, not just the people that I subscribe to on YouTube, but like everyone who comments and likes my videos and who supports me in general, like you guys are just amazing. So that's what inspires me to keep going, um, even though it's quite hard to find the time to make videos all the time. It's it's good and um, you guys are just perfect so thank you. <laughs> how did you get your style and how long did it take to grow it? Oh, um, I don't feel like I have a set style yet. I know some people recognise my work um, but I can talk about when I started doing a specific kind of style that I still use today and that's um, when I do the little sort of dotty eyes and I started that back in 2006 or 7 and it was just shortly after I started at um, college, our college and I was about 17 or yeah 16, 17 and I basically I really liked the little Bulbasaurs in Pokemon Snap that were dittos and um, I decided to draw Pokemon only with those eyes and I drew my characters only with those eyes as well so um, I kind of I got my style and nickname previously my nickname was Ditto on the internet and that's how I got my nickname and my style from that um, but basically what inspires my style um, is just anything that I am into so probably the biggest things are like my love of Japanese culture so that's probably the biggest thing that inspires my style um, and how I got it and how long it takes. I, I think styles are constantly evolving so there's not really a set answer for that, if that makes sense. <laughs> Sadie Slim Jim said, are you self-taught or did you go to art school? Um, a little bit of both. I did, I do have a degree in animation. I studied um, multimedia back in college before that and but I always took it upon myself to go and practice and practice and practice and um, throughout university I developed my own work and I, I also kind of taught myself animation before I went to university as well like I already knew a few of the things um, like basic animation things um, however all of my photoshop like I don't want to say skills that sounds so big headed um, all of my photoshop experience is completely self-taught I was given a really brief introduction back in 2005 and I fell in love with Photoshop then and I remained in love with Photoshop. Miss Kendra says, when did you start drawing and what made you start? Um, I've always like drawn all my life um, but I started taking it seriously when I was about 15 and I was introduced to Photoshop and up until then I wanted to be a police detective. So um, that that's kind of what I, I wanted to do was like I changed all of that I decided no I want to be an artist I want to be an animator um, and basically I saw uh, Brother Bear um, the making of Brother Bear sorry and I saw that they were using like paper and like it wasn't as hard as I thought it was to create animation um, obviously it is difficult and it requires skill and everything I'm not saying it doesn't but um, it wasn't like this magical thing like I honestly thought it was it was unobtainable but um, that's what made me sort of ditch the police idea and go into drawing. <laughs> Susie the writer says who's your favourite not well known artist? Ooh I have a few and they all seem to be my friends um, one of them is Jazz who um, she doesn't really post much online anymore but she's definitely one of my favourite artists. Um, in terms of not well known, I don't know if my friend Brogan is not very well known. Um, she does have a substantial following, so I feel bad saying that, but not everyone knows her. Like She's not like super famous, but she's also one of my favourite artists. 
and also my other friend Steph and like we're all, all three of us are, are friends so um, Steph is an amazing artist as well so oh there's, there's so many and I'm kind of biased because they're all my friends and it's like oh, um yeah oh also I really like Joy San um, she doesn't have a very big following on YouTube yet so you should go and check out her channel she's amazing as well and I love her work HB, is that how you say that? HB? HB? Oh, it could be that. Um, how do you deal with art block, keeping yourself motivated, and do you have work hours? Um, work hours for the printing service? Yes. Work hours for my art? No, I go to bed anywhere between 11 and 4 in the morning, and that's not good. <laughs> um, how do I keep myself motivated? That's quite difficult to do. Um, I just, there's little things that motivate me more, like seeing something that I like, such as recently getting into Steven Universe, that has motivated me, or recently playing Persona 4, that has also that has also motivated me. So anything that kind of, like I enjoy, that kind of motivates me more, um, but it can also demotivate me, because I'll think, oh, I'm never gonna be that good, so it's kind of, it's a bit difficult. Um, but what was the other thing? How to deal with art block? Um, I don't really know how I deal with it. I kind of just walk away and go back to it later. But I did have a really long art block which lasted a year. And that was insane and it was difficult. And it actually kind of, in terms of digital artwork, it lasted two years. Um, and it was discover rediscovering what I wanted to do with art. And it was so difficult. Um, so art block can, it, it depends what kind of art block, if it's a long term one like that, the thing that brought me out was stepping away and going back to it later, but it took two years for me to feel comfortable drawing digitally again, which was, I'll talk about that some other time because it was, it was crazy. Roldemort, aka Jen, says, can I sell the drawing you did for me for a massive profit now that you're famous? I'm not famous! I'm so proud of you, thank you. M&R <laughs> uh, Art says, what is a little known fact that we most likely don't know about you? There's a few, but it's whether I want to talk about them online. <laughs> uh, this is hard, oh my god. Um, um, the, the only thing I can think of is the fact that um, most people assume that Tyranitar. Uh, most people assume that Ditto is my favourite Pokemon, but it's actually Tyranitar, but I think a lot of people kind of know that. If I can think of more, I will come back to that. Um, Honor Watt says, what further education did you do? What Would you change what you did? I did further education in the form of um, an art college, and then I went to university to study animation at 18, and I would change that entirely because what I gained from it, I feel I could have learned myself or I didn't need to use it now and um, for example I don't do 3D animation anymore and I feel like I could have probably benefited more from, I always say this, I always wish I'd done Japanese as a degree instead because I feel it would have been more useful um, to me personally. Hybrid Sketches aka Louise, hello Louise, how much do you miss me and the rest of the girls? Loads! I miss the, the girls as in um, Fiona who has a channel and I'll link you to it and Louise and Amy and Vicky, oh, you guys, I miss you guys so much. Also, what inspires you to draw every day? Um, again, it kind of changes. Like, um, for example, currently, anything I watch on YouTube kind of inspires me to draw. Really. <laughs> T Mice says, "How long did it take you to reach the style you have now?" Again, um, as long as I've been drawing, really. So since 2015 because I feel like my style evolves with my skills, so that's the only answer I can think of. Mermaid Jerky says, what made you want to start making YouTube videos? Um, basically, I was tired with the platforms that I was already using, and I always, always wanted to be making videos on YouTube. Um, I never really had the equipment or the sort of, I felt too scared because I thought you had to be like, super amazing and everything and I, I kind of felt intimidated by YouTube a little bit um, so I was just a lurker for the longest time but mostly people like Bailey J back then, Zed Kitty Zed were the people who inspired me to 
the, the Bailey J, there's also art by Karen E. Haley. Oh, the, all the artists that I followed back then, that I still follow now, um, they were the inspirations for getting me into YouTube. Holly's Totally Cool says, what are your favourite colour combinations? Gold and dark blue. Just, oh, beautiful. Like, night skies of gold and dark blue and, oh my gosh, beautiful. Who's your favourite Steven Universe fusion? Oh, Ryan asked me this the other day. It's, oh, I can't choose, I can't choose. It's, there's Opal. I also really like Sardonyx. And then there's Garnet. And I'm just like, I can't choose, I can't choose. Ryan said I was cheating by picking Garnet. So, just, I'll, I'll say Opal. <laughs> Puppy4179 says, when did you get your love for bees? Back in around 2010, I decided to look into the decline of bumblebees and I really got into it. I was like, oh my God, I was, I was so passionate about it. And um, I decided to create an animation called The Bear and the Bee. And if I've got a copy of the book, which I don't, I don't know where my book is. Um, if I could find it, I'll, I'll insert a little bit of video here. But basically, um, it was a story aimed at young kids to sort of describe the decline of bumblebees and what they can do. And I'm still really passionate about that. I'm a member of the BBC team, the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. And I absolutely just, I love bees as well. I'm just looking at them and they're all fuzzy and cute and fuzzy. And I like that. <laughs> Accubert says, congrats on the 8K, which I hit a while ago on YouTube and the 1k so thank you um I always find your commentary very soothing but question wise I guess I'm curious whether you want to expand your printer business more or actual merch business more there's part of me that just wants to set up on society six and let them deal with my own print but I like making my own print so much um I'm currently expanding the printing service quite a bit but it's really hard work just me on my own so next year I'm looking to employ someone full time with a proper studio and I'm so excited for that. But until then, it's got to stay really tight and really closed, like really well organized and I'm getting on top of that now and oh, it's so hard. But um, in terms of my own merchandise, do you want to call it that? It sounds really posh. Um, in terms of my own merchandise, I will always just create my own and I love taking my stuff to conventions and selling it there. It's just amazing. And the people I meet, you guys, are just amazing. Like, some of you came to meet me. I just, oh, I won't get started. Paint Me Magic says, what kind of setup do you use to film yourself drawing? Like a tripod. I use this thing. This is a camera stand that came, well, okay. It came with a set for um, photography, like a light box. And you can get them on Amazon pretty cheaply, but I've never been able to find them. It's kind of like a monopod, but it's got feet. It's a feeder pod. Fox ears. What were some of your struggles as an artist when you were younger? <sighs> I think just getting noticed online was really difficult. Um, and also, kind of like coming into contact with toxic people because that that can really stop people doing what they love. Franey says, persona find out when? Soon. <laughs> Snarky Tuna says, favourite Disney or Miyazaki movie? Uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Howl's Moving Castle is my top favourite film of all time, like any other film. No, just that movie. Um, but my favourite Disney movie is Treasure Planet. Not many. Hey, there's a, a, a little known fact. My favourite Disney movie is Treasure Planet. <laughs> Andy Shepard says, what's your favourite animated animal, real or completely fictional? Probably say cat bus or Totoro. Yeah. Um, Honey Bee Jane, how do you get your work noticed? I'm a new artist online. I want to have commissions and be seen. What advice do you have? I use Instagram and Tumblr to put my art out. What else could I do? I've heard that hashtags are the way to go. Like I get really worried about hashtags because I don't want people to think that that's all I'm there for. It's like hashtags. Um, but that's my own sort of worries in my head. Um, Getting your art noticed online. Unfortunately, the truth out there is that the, the, it's fan art. It, it's fan art that gets noticed more than anything else, unless you are ridiculously talented, and that's unfortunately a home truth. Elijah CW26 says, Ah, you're so amazing. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I absolutely love your videos and art, and your personality is just awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> um, 
I was wondering if you would go to Japan someday. I've been to Japan twice and I am planning to go again next year because I love Japan. Oh, it's so good. Like everything you've ever dreamed of is there. <laughs> I would definitely go back to Japan, but I want to visit Kyoto this time. I've only been to Tokyo. So I am planning a trip to Japan next year. I never know how to change your name. Zumi. <laughs> how do you get regular commissioners? I, I don't really know. Like people tend to find me. Um, I think again it's just like having the right amount of exposure, so regular commissions is... I don't even take regular commissions because it takes me too long to do commissions, like I only do them in emergency situations. Mimi Ranger says, I love watching your videos, your art is so cute, thank you. What is your favourite part of creating and having your own business and your favourite thing to create? Favourite part of creating is finishing, like that sounds really morbid and like finishing, but um... No, I really like seeing the final result, um, it just feels really rewarding. Um, but probably my favourite part of the process is colouring, like I just love painting, I love colouring, digital painting, it's just like, I love doing it, I enjoy it so much. Um, favourite part of owning your own business, I get to work in my pyjamas, um, I would say I can work whenever I want, but I can't, I have to have strict work hours with my printing service. But I get to do them in my pyjamas, woo! Coral, coral, coral. Every time I hear the word coral, I think of SpongeBob as corral. Coral Rose says, where do you live and where would your dream place be? Um, I live in a good old England. I live in the Northwest. Um, I'll show you a little map, like here. And I would love to live in Japan. I probably would rather live in Canada because I know that I won't ever stop living in Canada. <laughs> I, I did a lot of growing up in Canada so um, my phone locked. So probably Canada. I do want to actually move to Canada in the next few years. So, um, Jessie Lynn Art says, when did you first decide to have an art shop? Um, when people started asking me to buy, like to sell stuff to them, that's I kind of had no other option. <laughs> Nate Dog says, who's your favourite Pokemon? I answered that, it's Tyranitar. Tyranitar and then Jolteon and then Ditto. And then Chikorita. I also like Bulbasaur and Pikachu though. And Charizard. And Swallow. And Lapras. Eiffel. Eiffel Creative says, where would you like to see yourself and bespoke print in say a year or two? A year I want an employee. Oh my god I need an employee so bad but I can't afford a commercial unit. Where would I like to see myself? Um, I'd like to see if I can double my subscriber count. Like it's currently at 97 something. Um, I'd like to see if that can be doubled, that would be kind of cool. And also I'd like to just, um, probably push my painting skills more. An elf gift, the last one, sorry this is probably the longest video in existence. If you weren't an artist, what would you do as a career? Ah, oh, I answered that! I'd be a police detective. Or an archaeologist. Yeah, or a translator. Oh my gosh, right. Probably would have been a translator. That's all the questions, so I would like to do another Q&A at the end of next month or perhaps September and I would like you to ask any questions you want in the comment section um, and I will, depending on how many I get, I might not be able to answer them all because I don't want this video to be too long so um, if you want to just ask any questions or anything just let me know um, and I will try my best to answer them. They can be personal, they can be about art, they can be about business, they could be anything, probably won't answer two questions that are too personal, um, however, yeah, just um, ask away. So thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video, bye!